Uh, welcome. Welcome very much to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome to the program a friend of uh, Conversations for sure in the broader world, and that's a dear friend of uh, ours, Coley Clark, who is a pioneer civil rights worker who has a, a resume that would knock your socks off in terms of fighting for the rights of people in a, in a very, very good cause all through the decades, and she's now running again, we have to announce, for the Senate of the United States on the Green Party uh, in this upcoming election. And Coley, it's so good to see you. It's been far too long. Welcome. Well, the same here, Harold, and it's wonderful seeing you, and thank you, as always, for having me on your show. No, it's my great good pleasure. You're running again, and uh, we've got a list of some of your, your, we were just ruminating a little bit here, and uh, of your some of the issues, and uh, one sticks out for me, make the banks pay back all their ill-gotten gains. Yeah, Harold, I'm running on a freedom agenda. Okay, yeah, okay, we spell it in, out. Let, yeah. let us, let, let us be, just be real with New York. We live in very perilous times. Absolutely. When we were talking earlier, when every single issue affecting humanity has been wrapped up in a package mm -hmm. by the corporate world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are strung in this package, tied tight, mm -hmm. without having really the access mm -hmm. to the material resources needed to be able to struggle against this giant. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that stands out, of course, is always the issues of the banking world. Yeah. In 1803, uh, George Washington, right into the then, <laughs> I guess that's the first secretary of the treasurer, uh -huh. that whatever you do, you know, you don't want these <laughs> banks to be, uh, to, to rise up. So that was George Washington George, or Hamilton? No, uh -huh. excuse me, and it wasn't George Washington, it's, it's, it's Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, right. I apologize, right. New York, because Jefferson right into Hamilton. Uh -huh. We don't want these banks to rise up, yeah. because they'll build around them other financial institutions, mm -hmm. and, and they will concoct schemes and whatever, but to reduce your children to slaves. Mm -hmm. They'll take your property. Da, da. He's, he's talking about that. Well, there were a whole lot of slaves that were and slaves. There were already slaves at that time. At that and, time some yeah. of the, and the man who was right into, to, uh, obviously, to uh, Alexander Hamilton, Hamilton himself yeah. owns more than three or 400 slaves. Yeah, that, right, that right, 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 right. It was a part of the time period and an unforgivable part. And the, for the electorate or the, the participators in the political process Interestingly, we're all white males. All white males with property. Small, with large wealth. tracts of property and gaining wealth for their own interests. Yeah, and that, and that is the, keep and that, that in mind. That, that is the foundation the, of yeah. the nation. We, yeah, right, we, right. You know, people talk about the foundation of the nation without mm -hmm. uh, remembering its history. Mm -hmm. That the opening of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, mm -hmm. uh, specifically mm -hmm. for the wealthy and property. Uh-huh. As males, uh, yeah. not females. Mm -hmm. And so that 99% of, of, of those who uh, lived in the land had nothing. Uh -huh. They were had come in as indentured servants, and now mm -hmm. that this war is right. over, they're being freed from those indentured mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they are now beginning to acquire some land and try to build lives for themselves. Mm -hmm. But white males will not get the right to vote just more than little, little, little more than 30 years before black males get the mm -hmm. right to vote. Mm -hmm. They get it in the 80s, 30s, black males get it in, in late 1860s. Mm -hmm. But it's all, all about males. So yeah. to, even when it came to the, the freedom of the slaves, uh, mm -hmm. white women, Mm. were not allowed to ascend, not even wealthy white women, mm. ascend the ladder to the right to vote. And I think that stretches back. Unfortunately, it would seem to be that that, in a certain sense, stretches back into the midst of history. It does. It's a pattern that seems to have been there ever since civilization. We don't know what was the case when we were wandering around in the wilderness before civilization, agriculture, and all that. But it's yes. probably been pretty grim. And just in, for so many, a fundamentally unjust arrangement of societal affairs almost from the beginning and it continues in a new way to where mm -hmm. it comes at a new crisis point in terms of a generally unjust system that James Joyce had Dedalus say uh, history is a nightmare mm -hmm. of injustice from which we're attempting to awaken. We're here to say we ought to awaken for reasons that are intrinsic to this particular time in a unique way. Yeah, after right? uh, Henry Ford's history is a lie told on the dead. Or he said it was bunk. Or he said it was bunk. Yeah, yeah. So we, no, so but you understand what I'm yeah, trying to make the point. exactly what you're saying. It's a nightmare now. It might not have been a nightmare then, Well, but okay. it is a nightmare now. And of course, across time, uh, we could always talk about the role of women, but I don't want to get tied down with women because I want to tie right. myself to banks. Right. But we... Herodotus and others commenting mm. on 
Africa and Ethiopian women and yeah. women in, in Africa who, of course, had liberties and you couldn't sit on the throne in Egypt unless you sit on the throne of Aset. Uh-huh. Uh, because uh, women yeah. had, had risen to a, to a certain phase, but you yeah. got knocked back down at some yeah. point too. Yeah. So, yeah. By the yeah. way, that's another story. In, 19, in 2008, yeah. banks represented 43% of American wealth. Banks did. Okay, and they're, okay. They're, and, uh, yeah. and in 2012, they represent 56% Unconscionable, and wealth. they've uh, wrecked so much. There's 12 million people have been thrown out of their homes and so forth on fraudulent uh, right. uh, conditions that That's right. are not recognized by them. And they just want to have, and they're now getting uh, new brass railings on all of their yachts and their Learjets and doing very well with nobody who caused all the trouble ever going under the, uh, into the dock much less into uh, prison where probably some of them do belong and some justice being meted out to the people. It's all moving in the opposite direction, seemingly. Yeah, and, and they're still in the same trouble. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not like they have recuperated mm -hmm. from the trouble. Mm -hmm. The trouble was what? Credit crisis. Mm -hmm. And the banks are still having a credit crisis. Uh -huh. So that too big to fail lie that mm -hmm. Obama sold to the Republicans and the Democrats mm -hmm. and to the American people has been proven to be what it was, a falsehood. Well, yeah, after, yeah, yes, right. So it, and it, culminated, of, it culminated, there was some, uh, after Franklin Roosevelt and whatnot, they got Glass-Siegel and some things that were oh, bad. Yeah. Yeah, Glass-Siegel and, and God bless Chuck Schumer from New York State. Mm. That's our senator's introduction. Yeah, to well, yeah, yeah and, and Mr. Clinton signed the final, uh, put the final nail in the cloth from, of separating the investment banks from the, you know, the commercial bank. That's correct. Which just gave them free reign. And they mm -hmm. put all the decision making on derivatives and everything in the private sector, in the banking community that is served only by a, a myopic view of market principles that are the only principles that hold in terms of operating this spaceship Earth of ours. Right. Everything but a legal system in place to penalize them to bring them into check are a Congress in place. Mm -hmm. Well, well yeah. senators are really saying, you know, except for a few. We got my brother out of, out, out, out of Vermont. Yeah, uh, Mr. San Mr. Sanders. Mr. Sanders. Bernie Almost, Sanders. A the lone voice down there. A lone voice down there. <laughs> down yes, there right, yeah. Uh, demanding, yeah. look, let's make some common sense of this thing. Yeah. So we have to make common sense. One, if they had 43% of the wealth in 2008 and they've got 56%, now more than half, 6% mm -hmm. beyond half mm -hmm. today, then the American people need to write off, say, we want back immediately 13%. Mm -hmm. That should be no question about that. 13% mm -hmm. re returns immediately back to the national treasury. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of what they did, particularly the securitization of notes, of, of uh, stocks even, uh, they, they converted, securitized, converted them into bonds. That's right. And bonds are supposed to be, th those will get into the big, uh, uh, it's, it's secure. It's long-term secure. Bonds have a security, and they misgraded them. Mm -hmm. And it was a corrupt system that m make them triple A, and they were not, the, there wasn't any validity to it at all. It was what would be called, and is on the face of it, fraud. And it got away with American it. people yeah. need to know that the Fraud. president of the United States had to have known mm. that banks had no liquidity crisis. Mm -hmm. They didn't come asking for cash. Mm. They came asking for a triple A credit rating because they were fearful of what would happen with the international markets. Yeah, okay. And well, they found what? Mm. A man standing there with a triple A credit rating in mm. his right hand and trillion dollars yeah, plus and, in, in the left. And so they said, oh, wow, good, thank you, thank you, thank you. And a lot of those stock certificates, uh, stock certificates were created, were, 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 were made into bonds. That's right. Securitized. And then they were leveraged 40, 50 times. And there was nothing at all to, there was no value at all, but they were able to build that and get payment from AIG, a private sector yes. derivatives reinsuring system that they've set up, mm -hmm. which got them money. And then then in the end, Mr. Paulson had to go and give them seven hundred trillion dollars that they almost did, a billion dollars that they mm -hmm. didn't. And now, and and now they're not they're not spending it. 
They're not no. spending here. They would rather invest in somewhere where they can take advantage of a brace to the bottom wages right. and that kind That's of thing right. around right. the world. So uh, so we're in deep doo-doo at that level. It's systemic is the point, really. But it is and it systemic. goes across the board. It infects the political class. Every institution is being affected by it and so forth. And we're at a great crisis because the system is, for the histor with a historical focus, is dysfunctional that has served for so long. It has become dysfunctional in terms of our current situation situation technologically and otherwise in terms of evolution. There's an evolutionary new world that is not able to be ma manipulated by the old system, much like the feudal system was overthrown yes. by George Washington and company. Yes. Here, you understand? Yes. On that level, historical. But it's even larger than that. It's actually, we're coming, we're coming coldly to the end. When you get weapons that can wipe out without a question, Daniel Ellsberg shows it, the weapons, which has been the leading edge of political power, so that whoever has the gun can conquer the others, be above the law and all that realpolitik still holds. Yes. The weapons are without a doubt totally species lethal for the whole of the homo sapiens species since about 1970. You know, now that's, that's an existential reality that never seems, to never seems to come into the discussion of things on a comprehensive, almost evolutionary, understanding developments in an evolutionary sense. But uh, I think it's very difficult for New Yorkers and, and, and the U.S. Or and world anybody, citizens. Anybody to imagine that among the human population mm -hmm. has emerged a very small group of men primarily mm -hmm. who are so irresponsible that they would destroy the very planet they live on. It's close. I mean, that you can't imagine. This is like a man sitting on the limb, you know, just sewing off the, so, the limb. And he's on the and wrong end of the sitting limb. Sitting on the limb that he's, he's on the outer, off the end outer that he's sitting on. That, this is a kind of insanity. This is mm. not sane. Mm -hmm. And so as a candidate for U.S. Yeah. Senate, I am saying, as I rally other senators if I can, yeah. rallying the Congress if, if I can, but more importantly, rallying the people. Mm -hmm. Because we, the people, mm -hmm. are responsible for what those folk do. Mm -hmm. We, the people, mm -hmm. we committed to that Constitution. Yeah, that's Constitution. And when you, when you become a registered voter, you have totally committed to that Constitution, that we, the people, mm -hmm. this is a government by the people. Mm -hmm. For the people. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we, the people, are responsible for the deeds of other men and women. But even those who yes. were, let's keep in mind, those who were setting it up, it was, those were good words coming out of John Locke and the Enlightenment yes. and that kind of thing and everything. But they were setting up a system that was really, if you could say, for the people and all that. But it was really for the white uh, rich. For, for, for the white male and rich. That's what it was, reality. Yes, yes. that's Understand? the common reality, yeah, that yeah, white yeah. women couldn't own property. So those words, areas. but those words do have some meaning in terms of being able maybe to have some way ways in which for citizens or people who want to question in a large way the system, they can use those words in order as a tactic or a strategy for working within a constitutional yeah. system that everybody's put allegiance to. It gives some possibility for there to be fight back in legal terms that can be winning for the mass of the people in a new way that historically hasn't been available to us. Without a question. And that is what the civil rights movement thank did. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. King gave validity validity yeah, yeah. to a dead document. Mm -hmm. And so I am saying now, as I run on a freedom agenda. Yeah, yeah. The freedom we, agenda. I'm okay. running on a freedom agenda. Okay. I'm running on an agenda that's calling for an economic bill of rights. Thank you. Yeah. A constitutional. Uh-huh. As a constitutional right. Uh-huh. I'm running on an agenda for an economic, uh, for, for, for clearly a uh -huh. constitutional uh, right to an education. Uh, okay. A constitutional uh -huh. right to health. Well, we have one state in the union with a, that has a constitutional right to education. Is it has Vermont? the best no. education right no. next door in New Jersey. In New Jersey. Is that true? Okay. It hasn't been that Thank great, you. but it has mm. been better than nothing. It has uh, one of the best, in fact, it has one of the most literate populations in the United States. Well, yeah. And one okay, of the best yeah. education systems in the United States. Unfortunately, a lot of those people come out of the university with a huge burden of debt, don't they? No, no it's, come up, it's God, unconscionable how much it costs. It's, 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 it's unreal that we don't have to declare a at universal the, education. At the same time, Ooh. we have a universal system of information distribution and everything uh, with the Internet now. I don't know why anybody would want to go to get a certificate from a education educational institution when they have the whole world of institutional understanding. No, the whole knowledge of the world is becoming so easily available to everybody on an autodidact.
autodidact way. Sure. But the educational system is tied in with the political system, and that's tied into the economic system and everything. They're all tied together to reify, to reestablish the outdated system that they still think can hold when there's what's needed is a qualitative new system in terms of a qualitative moment in history where there is a qualitative transformation required. If you can understand what I'm saying. It's yes. interconnected at everything. It's not one thing. It's not one change, one bill, one bill or one political No, no, change. it all has to be. That's it's all it has connected. to be a freedom agenda. Mm. Americans has to have to understand mm. that every, each of these critical needs is tied to the other. Mm -hmm. It don't make common sense when your greatest national security of any nation mm -hmm. is its youth. Mm -hmm. Is what? Is its youth, its yeah. young people. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And not to educate your young, not to have a universal education for the young, not to have a universal education system that ha that's a transition from the secondary education level through at least four years of college, mm -hmm. where you're paying 100 percent in public education institutions that are quality public education institutions mm -hmm. for young people to get at least the bachelor's degree. It doesn't make a lick of common sense mm -hmm. not to underwrite through terminal degrees field of, of, of medicine, the field of education, the field of agriculture, engineering and technology, those are just critical mm -hmm. because they are the <coughs> things that keep you going from generation to generation. And the purpose of an education really is to indoctrinate you into the culture, well, to provide it. you with the skills. Well, uh, with all but due not respect, the culture of insanity. to indoctrinate you into it, and I, there's a program being aired this week with a fellow uh, pioneer. I can't believe, I think he's in his high 90s now, George Stoney. Wow. We've got public access where we are talking, yes, and there's a little, at his work. a little lighthouse of uh, freedom of expression other than just... And I agree with them. The educational process, they have divided and conquered. In Africa, the colonialists divided and conquered the nations uh, through divide and conquer tactics. That's right. They've done the same thing with the intellectual community. And with us here. You know the reason yeah. that the kids come in? Apparently, that's what he was complaining about in a program we're going to air this mm -hmm. week from some years yeah. ago, a couple years ago. They come in, and they're not at all interested really in learning something. They're interested in getting a certificate that's, right. that's going to make it possible for them to maybe get a job or maybe get into Harvard business so they can make money. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. they it's, it's, a, it's just a way to get money Money, and that's what they're interested in, and they're divided into specializations. So nobody's thinking about things comprehensively. That's the right. old, the old, uh, you know, general th uh, understanding uh, things in a comprehensive way. That's right. And they divided them up and conquered them, so they haven't. I don't think the educational institutions are worthy of that. They're only there as a training ground to fit people into and corporate, you, and the magic corporate, uh, uh, corporate, uh, corporate, uh, corporation where they will do what they're told by an authority figure. That's right. The magic word is training. Training is, 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 is specific to hmm. whatever job you're going to. Yeah. And many corporations are doing their own training. They took over training institutes after the early 70s right. and began to do it in-house. Yeah. Because if you do it out-house, it, it is objective. People come in, have no concern with your company, so it's an objective training. Yeah, yeah. But if it's in-house, yeah. it's company specific. So it's more than more than that. Yeah. Since we're talking on education, what the the major thing that it does about everything is is model. The model of the educational institutions are essentially, and there's examples, I mean, there's some, uh, you know, exceptions and so forth, but it's really to teach people to be answerable to an authority figure. That's correct. That's like uh, in the army, you have a master sergeant. When the master sergeant says jump, all the corporals jump. Right. Okay? And it's the same thing. They're just divide. They're, so that's a basic training that they're trying to get into people so that they're not going to be thinking independently or uh, creatively or anything like that. They're going to learn to respond. So that's a large part of what the corporations and the larger systems want out of their citizens. Well, they're, they're, they're people who will be compliant to the authority of a figure that's setting up an institution. And the institutions are, as we're coming to understand, systemically dysfunctional in their basic structure and their that's understanding. Right. Well, the so law of the workplace, thing. Harold, the law of the workplace in the United States is something called the master-servant law. 
Well, the whole no. That's the that's the that's the uh, that's the that's the uh, description of the system that set up society. <laughs> Master but, slave. But this is what I'm saying. We're is, all slaves. In, in 1880s, yeah. when they came up with them, I think it's 1880s when that yeah. law is passed mm, yeah. for the workplace, when yeah. the unions began in their fight. Mm. Master servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you know we work under that every day. Or they call which it simply serpent. means that you work at the will of the master. That's right. He do what you. You work at the will of the boss, the at, will of the owner. That's right. And so, they're being. Unless you've got a contract, and yeah. that's a we have as a sister from Harvard. I'm trying yeah. to remember her name. Mm. A brilliant uh, labor yeah. lawyer. Yeah. The first time I heard that, I didn't believe it. I said, "She's yeah. got to be out of her mind." No, no, no. You I mean th- you mean we were we were slaves? Yeah. We understood if you use the word master, it was a fighting time. Yeah. But why didn't the unions respond to that? Well, we had chattel we sense. had chattel slavery as people of black persuasion or were yes, yes. all under. Fugitive slave acts and all these kind of things. That's it's right. just a horror. But we also had indentured slaves. Yeah. Irish they were indentured told, in great they numbers. They told them they were servants. Actually, many of the Scots came in as slaves. And then you had the and class many, system. Many of the many of the people who lived in England who were actually British citizens who were picked up, pulled out of jails, and tossed on ships also came in as and exiled to that slave, slave colony, the United right. States That's colony, right. where they right. were. That's where they were set over as a as a punishment. The same That's with correct. Australia. That's correct. But the even whole state of Georgia is a, is a But is even beyond that, colonies. when they talk about education, there's no education. There's hardly any education. Everything is so specialized. Everybody becomes specialized on a particular thing. You don't even become a doctor anymore. You become the specialist on the right digit of the right finger somewhere. <laughs> and that specialization is where the money is. You get yes. specialized. Yes. Anybody's got a general look, and nobody's thinking about things comprehensively. Well, it's critical, though, that we do think. No, it's, right it's, now, we could, called, we could employ most of the unemployed workforce if, indeed, they were trained for the jobs that are available. Well, I want Sixty to percent of the available jobs are in technology and related mm. areas, uh, and we don't have American citizens trained to fill them. I'm wondering if I could take exception to what you said in a way that I think okay. is not generally done by people who are in our circles, and that is... Uh, it's talking about because you say the assets are all owned by a tiny plutocratic class. The tax cut of Mr. Uh, Bush, uh, you know, the second it went. It, Krugman wrote, and should, it, the benefits of that didn't even go to um, only the one percent. Yeah. It wasn't even the one tenth of one. The real benefit. There was a little bit to the one tenth of one percent. The real benefits went to those one one hundredth of one percent of the very, tax very, very that they're going to protect now. The old families. They want to protect, the yeah. old families. Well, the yeah. old families. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the point being more uh, significant is that. Uh, the the idea that you they they have all the assets now the assets are becoming increasingly responsible for production with cybernetic uh, capability. Mm-hmm. I mean, at Tom Jefferson Day, you had a piece of leather and a, p- and a hammer, and it took you 12 hours to make a pair of shoes. Now they got a machine that can stick, a, that can knock them out 30,000 in an hour, and mm-hmm. you don't even need people. They have combines that can move. That's What's right. happening is the labor input to production, which is, and the only way the folks, the serfs, are to get any income or buying power in the model that they have Mm -hmm. is to have a job on the estate where all the assets and all the resources are owned by a tiny slave-owning class. And And they say, we have to get a job for everybody. That what they should be saying, and this is really a little hard for people to understand, they ought to be having a system where the mass of the people all systemically, by the way we form capital Mm -hmm. and the way we distribute demand, that the ownership of the capital asset, the the combine or the uh, or the algorithm or whatever is democratically distributed to everybody as an income of distribution of income and buying power to them because they're being displaced by technology. Well, that's no question. That, that, so the labor theory of value that informs so much of the left, how wonderful it is to work on masses of state. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's mm-hmm. the way we that's build right. a middle that's class. Right. And I'm saying masses don't even want you own his estate, Harold. No. Because if he did, he'd train you to enter those 60% jobs that are, that are just sitting there. Well, that, that, there that, are that, n- I, I would submit, darling, those jobs are going to be, the jobs that are there are artificially supported. And they're That's not right. going to be there as a way of distributing money and buying power to the people. I won't argue with that. My no, point and is we that don't have an alternative from, let's say, the left. 
because well, the left's all caught up with the idea of how wonderful it is, the labor theory of value, mm -hmm, let's mm -hmm. get a minimum wage, <laughs> let's get a living wage, no. and, our, and, and what they should be asking for is ownership of the capital assets. That's right, they ought to be on, that's ownership for, for what, of the capital What a little capital simple asset. peasant leader in, in Africa was asking for in a desert. No. And that is what? Mr. Libby. Hey, let's Libya. go to Libya because yeah, he yeah, had more yeah, common sense than we have. Yeah, he we was have way to ahead of credit. us. The man was clear. I came in from the airport and I mm. looked over the road and it said, partners, not workers. No, 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 dear. More succinct exactly to that critique of the left. It's the intellectuals that are falling down on the job with a critique, in my humble opinion. It, the, the sign that I've seen, I've been there eight or nine times, it's all over the time. Partners, not wage earners. Well, yeah, wage so earners. So yes. if you have a business in Libya, they were way ahead of us. Just of like course, we, were, yes. we were ahead of the inherited houses of Europe in 1776, historically. He was ahead of us. Far ahead. He's a new, is he, that is a new age. He's back to where Martin King stood in 1976. 66, when he said that America needed to redefine her values. No, not America, the whole wide world must. I know, the, no, no, the, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with Keith's statement, but oh, right oh, okay. the world must. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But need redefine her values. Yeah. I agree with you because mm. the world is corporately controlled. The whole world had better stand up. Right. And, 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 and they have need to control come because they own mm. the capital assets That's that right. are increasingly, with a, a ratio with labor, responsible for the actual production. That's correct. And it's all owned, and the left says, oh, it's perfectly all right. You own all the assets. Please give us a job on your estate. And all no, they no, talk no, about no, is no, creating no. jobs. Now, I'm mm, saying no. that ain't going to hold. It ain't going to hold because I, I'm running for Senate on the Freedom Agenda because yeah. I'm saying Are you that I am, I am responsible to the people, that the people themselves have to take control. Well, okay. And until you take control and set the agenda for this nation yeah. as a people, uh -huh. You know, the people of New York have to wake up, get out of this madness. Uh -huh. You know, forget these little material twinklets that we all wear and run around with. I don't think uh, that's likely to happen. Well, Do you? we better, no. No, we, what does that I mean? I didn't think oh, it would happen gonna, in 1959, Harold, yeah. when we were talking about ending segregation. Yeah. They were talking about some symbols of yeah. subordination. Because yeah. really, all we were talking about was ending some symbols of subordination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And getting a, a Civil Rights Act that would, that would, with some teeth in it, and getting a Voting Rights Act, which I'm fighting now for a constitutional right to vote. Uh, those yeah. were things we were fighting for. They yeah. were, you know, really just yeah. basic things. Yeah, this, this thing I'm talking and, about. And, and, and one morning I got up in 63, mm. in March, after mm. I, I was, 63, I was yeah. terribly depressed from 1959 when I started the journey. Why would you be possibly I was, depressed? Because I was trying to organize dogs. people. <laughs> Black folk were scared to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were saying, look, we're the ones facing the dogs for mm -hmm. you. You don't have to worry about getting bit. You know, yeah. we're going to be the catalyst. Come yeah. on now, get out the cotton field. Yeah. Throw your sack down. Yeah. You know, put off your, pull off your maze, mm -hmm. uh, apron. and Come on, let's, let's get yeah, out and do yeah, this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in 63, I woke up one morning. Yeah. And there were masses of people uh, on the streets of Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. And had the little in girls a parallel action, there were masses mm. of people on the streets of my hometown, Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, "Go, folks," because I, yeah. I saw it. I mean, yeah, it was so yeah, clear. Yeah. yeah, that was that a jump up rising. moment. It was a that jump up moment. It was a jump up moment. And Sixty-four Coming right would just phew. Yeah. Sixty-four would bring the North in, I and we'd have these children from universities coming. It was. It will happen, Harold. Mm. Occupy has made the move. Yeah, but Occupy is being suppressed now. It's, it's being, being suppressed, suppressed with Nazi tactics. All kind of taxes are yeah, coming against it, inside and out. Mm -hmm. You expect that. That's what happens with movement. We had more folk on the inside screaming and yelling against struggle, mm -hmm. oftentimes, than we had on the outside screaming and yelling. Yeah, a lot of people want to cling yeah. to what they know. Yeah, yeah everybody's yeah, scared yeah, to death. Yeah. I mean, what's the old Moses story of taking the children of Israel out in the desert and mm -hmm. away from Egypt and oppression, and they got out there. Many went, many, many went back immediately. Said, yeah, what the hell is this? I'm going home. Yeah, yeah. I'm going home. Yeah. You, ain't, you ain't telling me about no and I'm going home. And, Mel Brooks and the others just hung out there for years until my daddy said to Jesse Jackson one yeah, day, yeah, Jesse, Jesse yeah, was arguing with daddy yeah, about yeah. this whole thing about yeah, the Moses story. Yeah. And Jesse's daddy who was a man with third grade education. said, son, let me tell you something. Yeah, yeah, do. He said, uh, Moses got him out there. That's true. Mm. He said, but they hung out there 40 years until a man named Joshua came along, yeah. took Moses up to the top of the mountain, pushed him over, ah. and came back and whipped him out. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm glad you bring that I don't up. like that violence. I, 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 I'm glad. See, I'm going to make a claim for this time being there's no precedent for what's now. Amen. This is new. 
Like I just mentioned to you, uh, our friend Joe Friendly played this program with an angel of a man, uh, Daniel yeah, Ellsberg. Yeah, 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 the Pentagon, who, Pentagon, Pentagon Papers. papers yeah. He took it. That was a really big thing he did and everything. But what his major thing is, he has made a chapter and verse clear that one of the extensions of homo sap uh, characteristics of homo sapien consciousness that it came about, we're all African, a couple hundred thousand years, science mm -hmm. is telling us, we're all African, with self-reflective consciousness where you can take account of the larger issues and so mm -hmm. on. The other was the ability to extend consciousness through tools and technology and make the world different in a, than in an Eden-like sense when you're embedded, right? Yes. And that leading edge, once you get to civilization 8,000 years ago, the leading thing the political class did was to develop weapon systems so that they could enslave, their enslaved or co-opted people could go and conquer the other tribe, make their tribe strong. It's called realpolitik. Mm -hmm. Mao said power comes out of the end of the gun. Ultimately, it's still the military ability to intimidate others with your situation. It still holds. And those weapons have now. It's absolutely clear. And uh, not now. In the Second World War, we were protected. I'm trying to think big. Yeah, Second sure, World War, sure. we were protected in our impotence. We could kill, what, 500 million people and we're trying to kill everybody? We bombed Dresden? Oh, just 50 million. No. That's not important. Yeah, right? no. But the point is, in this sense, that kept going up and yes, up. We yes. get we get we get thermal we get uh, you know a nuclear weapons. We get thermonuclear. We get big belt. We get yeah. Edward Teller. We get, and those weapons have by uh, even in even in sixty two, when there was a they were likely to destroy civilization a good deal of civilization over the Cuba missiles right, and everything. Right. Scared out of my wits and everything. But it was about nineteen seventy about the time of Malcolm and all of that. What was blown in the wind wasn't just sex, drugs, and rock and roll oh, no. and civil rights. That was big. That was yes. all part of it. But it was not, there was an existential new reality of that extended capability. The weapons became then species lethal. That is, mm -hmm. the weapons are of such a magnitude, and Mr. Ellsberg laid it out so clearly, it's true, even at lowered levels than we would possibly think possible, that if they were to be unleashed, and they argue back and forth with great abandon, our tribe's stronger than your tribe, and all this kind of same old thing, yes. that if they were unleashed, it would be the end of every single human being on the planet and much of the primates in the upper order of evolution of consciousness on this planet since about 1970. That's an existential new reality. And God bless the Do you understand? Yes. Can yes. it get in? Can it settle? Do, are people aware of that? Are people aware of this? Well, I don't think people accept that, that as you and I sit here, the waves are pounding the West Coast shores, yeah. bringing in from Fukushima, mm -hmm. the most recent nuclear disaster. Yeah. Fish yeah. and other small animals, sea animals, and all kinds of stuff loaded down with what? I don't know, radioactive? Radioactive or materials. Yeah. yeah. So we got radiation up already up on us. Yeah, no, no. But we got Indian Point right out here. It's had a number of, of, of accidents right near us. I mean, we well, live in a respect. time when the only thing we mm -hmm. respect is what corporate media tells us. Well, that's what we're... And it gets its word from where? From corporate ownership. And I'm talking about yeah, those older families. Yeah. Understand, when we're trying to make the existential point, the uh, radiation that would come from that, and that, that would not... The, the thing that's new, what we're trying to make a case for. I know the big this, bang spit, boom, no, boom. No, no. Is, is this just your normal time no. now? Or is there something, instead of it being no. one issue, uh, uh, you know, one issue, is it quality? And you have to go almost to the idea of what, how does the new appear in evolution? We've all evolved. We all evolved up four million years ago. We were also Pythocene. Then we we're Homo habilis. Then we evolve our species. And now we're getting to the point where the context of the context of the extended consciousness that we have created has come to a point of dysfunction. We have to start thinking about it in evolutionary terms. We're coming to a quality. It's called punctuated equilibrium. It's like fulfilling the end of a birth process, nine months pregnant, it's not six months, mm -hmm. it's not 12, it's at a certain time, and that time is, as Isaac Asimov said, this is the defining generation in a qualitative way. When you can get to where you can stop evolution itself, every single human being dead, 
never to be back again. That whole process has been built up 200, uh, 13 points, well, 8 Harold, billion When you years. live in a world of fools, they imagine that I can send a vase with a human whatever in it out into space and someday it'll come back. I don't know so what you So we don't care. Said. What I'm saying is they don't care about the Who the, doesn't the group, care? The group, the, the, those who own the resources we are talking well, that's about, getting back. they're capable fair of enough. destroying and the I planet. I, uh, yeah, but no, fair enough. The question enough. is, do you and I care? No, no, yeah, no. Well, what I'm saying is, does humanity collectively understand? That's right. That, is there anything new about, is this thing just the same old thing we've been doing? You know, Spartacus fought, didn't he? Yes, you he know, did. He got beaten down. Jesus yes, tried. Yes. You know, there's injustice been we in there and all Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Is there something new about this thing that's trying to be born now? And what is the basis of our understanding in a comprehensive, systemic way, rather than just a historical, political way, where one political party beats another one and all the kind of fights, mm -hmm. mostly which makes up all the news? Mm -hmm. Is there something new? How the only thing that we is, can have is new is for... We humans, and we're talking about humanity now. Thank you, humanity and the ecology. Understand mm -hmm. that we are the players here who have created the condition. That's correct. That's correct. And, and, it's, and we are the players who have to. And the rules by which we have played for 200,000 years no longer can hold relating to the future. That's what, That's what happens with evolution. That's what happens when a new species appears. That's when you get down to the end of a, pro a gestating process, and we're coming to the end of that. Do, do, can you understand? Harold, if we humans do not want to be responsible for handing the planet over to the roaches, then well, we humans... The microbes, yeah. Uh, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. some other than yeah. us. Uh -huh, yeah. Then if we humans are in a position to begin to use that little thing that we got up yeah, here, yeah. but no longer individually. Mm -hmm. We have to come together That's right. a, in mass as group. Yeah, and that may be coming. And it's, it I is, think it this is Occupy coming. thing is something more than maybe those people like to think who thinks political. They're just thinking political. Yeah, political we've seen the stages. That if you we know. look at the U.S., we can see the civil rights movement. We can see out of that right. the evolution of arts movements. We can mm. see out of that the evolution of women's movement. We have seen this What thing. was the movement before women's movement? Arts? Arts movements. We have Art. the black oh. arts movement and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 right, okay, ground. civilization, works Mass arts movements, yeah, and yeah. they just don't, yeah, that yeah. cultural piece is still yeah, out yeah, here yeah, in many yeah. forms. We saw I'm that I'm glad come. you brought that up because, and, uh, if I may, on the other side of that equation, mm -hmm. it's an oxum's razor moment. That's what you're trying That's to get right. to. This is not normal. Amen. This is an unusual time. Beyond anything else, civil rights, anything, anything that's, that's right. occurred. That's right. This is, we've been in history. You get to a point, and on the other side, the technology that is creating increasingly the wealth and everything, and is what is, we, we could do, we have the, the percentage of world population within an ecological context through good design that could be seen to be realistically be what we call have as opposed mm -hmm. to have not mm -hmm. has gone up steadily. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. crossed by some uh, modeling the 50% mark about the same year that the weapons became and have remained species lethal. That was 40 years ago. That's right. We've been wandering in, and that we were transcending material scarcity well, we at a level of capability. It, Okay, Without a question. and our systems were all predicated upon the idea there's not nearly enough scarcity, and that's the holy grail of all the economic thinking, but there is enough for all, and the ecology through good design, mm -hmm. and through an appropriate system that distributes a system where each person can realize their own individual liberty. It's like we can liberate newly the capability mm -hmm. to liberate every single human being every, within an ecological appropriate context. That's equally significantly new in terms of only from about 1970. 1970 is a category to become year one henceforth if we don't join entropy and to stop the whole process of evolution of which we're a part. It's on that order. It's like on the order of we're coming to the end of the human experience. Mm -hmm. We're coming to a, a moment of new relationship in the universe that is like speciation. Except mm -hmm. we're going through it a lot. We're going through it wide awake now. So every question, every institution inherited is out of date. And we have to have a system that takes it, like Fuller comes up, he says, 
operating manual for spaceship Earth. We have to get the facts straight about what the reality is in an existential or, order. Mm -hmm. And the, the intellectuals are falling down on the job, and they're not coming up with that well, they, to they're provide owned the by alternative. The same system that owns the, that, that owns the Now you're slipping back, and medium. I can understand it into politics. It's very easy to do, and I think it's probably appropriate yeah. you have to do that. But it's not the politics. Go what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to have something that'll be able to be liberating of the people, the poor, suffering people. But it will have to be something that's going to present a pattern that will go through the whole and will be able to be uh, include. It'll be able to be understood by the people who have the finger on the button, some people, so that they will be able to understand an alternative that they can understand in their own terms that makes sense, that will, will halt them, that you get them involved so that it will include everybody. My, I, I think, though, Harold, I think Mr. Obama may be trying to reach for that. He may be trying to reach for that inclusiveness, and they're trying to find people that can understand it, but he's being undercut because the intellectuals aren't providing a ground or a figure and ground for understanding things in a comprehensive way. And it would be the way for capital is going to be formed, and how are you going to distribute income? The economics is all mm -hmm. involving the... We don't have an economics. It, we're all based up in how wonderful it is to work. We ought to be able to be get, Mr. Old Public. But uh, as we come to that evolutionary point, we also we're there. What we understand, we that's what I'm saying. That's it. The that also ticking. means we are there at a point where we will have to redefine everything, 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 including what we have traditionally called work. Well, that's what Mr. Yeah. Thank you, but the left doesn't. Left celebrates it. How wonderful it is to have a job, a masses estate. And you can get the skills, and you can do it, and all that. And they're going algorithm. You get an algorithm; it can do what fifty thousand people can do. You can't keep still building minimum wage criteria and celebrating how important work is. What you got to have is a system that gets owner, and that's Mr. Gaddafi, and that thing he said: when you have a business over there, you could not hire anybody. That's right. You That's couldn't right. hire anybody. Now, all we're talking about, got to get everybody to get a job on Masses mm -hmm. Estate. Mm -hmm. You keep mm -hmm. all the assets. You all own all the assets, all right? Private property, intellectual, all that kind of stuff. What we got to do is ha find a system to hoist that system on its own petard. When the system is there, we have to begin to look at the Green Book. We have to begin to look at... Well, you see what we did with Mr. Obama. We killed him. Well, NATO well, and we, Obama killed you him. Do, you can do all you want to kill people, but when an idea... It's time is right. And well, I I'm suggest suggesting the time it, is the right I'm now. To, I think it is, don't you? Uh, no question about it. I think we need it's some time people. for a new economic system. New, really new. It's got to be new. Economic new. system is now. Okay. And you and I yeah. and others like us have the responsibility. I'm not being prophets. We're not prophets, no. but educators who are going to get out here and begin, as you are doing here with your, with the I mean, in, God bless this public television media. Sing the praise is more important than people think. Yes, you know, it's only yes. the people and the people that are in positions of political power and the, the opinion center, they've all been co-opted. They're co-opted by peer review, they're co-opted by money, they're co-opted by things, and it isn't coming out anywhere. There's no one well, bringing the up the big picture. in this picture. country, the m and uh, in the country. m and M people, it's going to come out of the be. people, yeah. You know, not only are we protecting the right to speech, we are providing through that speech uh -huh. and through the arts or whatever we use here, all yeah. the mediums that we use, yeah. uh, the education that is necessary to take us to the next level. And mm -hmm. to set to get a template that is That's relating right. to the future will That's come correct. out. It will, it's very likely. Well, you own the cutting edge. No, no, That's no, 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 no. The planet is there. And, and, and Qaddafi, you underscore that. You could hire, you could start a business, you couldn't hire anybody. That's right. You know what they did? The people who made up the business had to be the owners of That's the right. capital assets of the business. That's right. Why are the people not the, being made to be the, or a plan being made for like Henry George or something, the resources? Why aren't we having a thing where the resources and the capital assets of an economy are owned democratically by everybody? That's why right. is they, why are they only saying it's all right to have it all owned by a few, it, the concentration is increasing and everything, right. and the left accepts it? Because they got some idea about the labor theory of value, how wonderful it is. You can argue this guy's going to work hard so he gets a minimum wage or he gets this and all that. And the unions have been undercut. Mm -hmm. because, and the, idea, the labor theory of value has to be brought in question. And that's the darling of the left. 
The left is the problem. They're not coming up with a way of hoisting the, the system on its own petard of capital. Yeah, it's so good. Let's make sure everybody's got a, an ownership stake. But if you have an ownership stake, they will demonize that because the only legitimate way to get money to buy food for the kitties is to have a job on masses of state. It's to work on a master servant. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> no, but do, do understand, it's not it's, being it's, brought it's, up. I anymore. mean, it's so insane, it's insulting. Well, right. Uh, you know, just even think about it, I get upset. What do you mean, master but, servant? No. Yeah. But uh, I think, though, Harold, I'm, I'm really back to, 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 to shows okay, like yeah. this okay. where you have been so responsible for bringing two the general public, one, creating a broad frame of reference, oh. and then clarifying that by presenting Trying. the issue. Well, you're doing that. No, well, and there are folks, a few people that are listening, and we know there are not millions of people listening, but there are enough listening. But, well, and I'm saying the 60s taught me that that little small cadre of people, mm -hmm. I was one of, of, of 16 people called field secretaries in Mississippi. Yeah. Uh, our leader was Bob Moses, and there was 15 yeah. of us young yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's still on the battlefield now. He's on the yeah. battlefield yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, you to feel yeah. for algebra. Yeah. That every child in the United States needs to know algebra. So Bob pushing for what? Mm -hmm. An education constitutional right to an education. Okay, well. It's inclusive of that, a new curriculum. Uh, All of these things will have to change. Mm -hmm. Nothing can remain the same. Ooh, thank you. I like that idea. All right, so yeah. we, we've got... To we have to have a vision of liberation. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, no. Gender. For all. For everybody. Ain't no question about it. And so it. that's the hard, that's one of the hardest the, the, parts. The hardest part is Because we're so wrapped up into saying who the bad guys are because everything's so dysfunctional. There's no vision there. You don't expect vision to be there. It's coming from the intellectuals are not providing an alternative that is going to be inclusive of the whole that's required. The intellectual community is falling down on the job and just falling back into finding out who the bad guys is. That's well, it may be that the intellectual community are the kids on Wall Street. Street. It may be that intellectual communities are the women's groups that are now forming around various yeah. issues. It may be that we haven't also held a new intellectual community. Well, we saw it in the 60s, and I think we'll see it now. Well, so. I liked your thing about Moses. Well, yes. What it's been, darling, if I could suggest, yes. we've been wandering like the, the Moses for the 40 women. years in the wilderness. Amen from when we have got, when the existential reality has qualitatively changed, it was called the spirit of Woodstock, it was called the spirit of Vietnam, Amen. it was called the spirit of liberal rights, all of that, that was, it, was, it was limited. Now, that's gonna be year one, in the fullness yes. of time. Yes. If yes. we got another time, it won't be 2012, it won't yes. be 7,776 or anything like that, yes. it's gonna be 1970. It's our lifetime, Yes. this time. Yes. This is the thing, and we got to get to that somehow, and, we, uh, and, and public access is one place where the Occupy thing should be supported mightily. I see the guy used to be the head of city groups, he said there's a lot to be said for, uh, with Bill Moyers, he said there's a lot to be said for the Occupy movement. Well, our children They're have been treating it like Gestapo now. Our children have been descended on. Yeah, right. When a mother's children are descended on, a father's children are descended on, hmm. we defend our children. Yeah, right, man. Yeah, so if right. Occupy is falling apart, Harold, no, but they're, it's because they're we who were pre-70s yeah. and went through the 70s yeah. are not there defending the interest of our children mm. because well, they are defending us. Well, I know. We ought to be a little easy on ourselves because what you're talking about isn't your normal notion of change. I mean, you know, um, slavery was so obviously, in a certain historical mm -hmm. sense, so uh, ridiculous and everything, but this is something that's of another order. So we ought to be easy on ourselves and the people, and it's hard for people to get into a thing where, but it's going, the change isn't coming like this. It's gone like this through time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can adjust. You can adjust, and everybody gets adjusted to institutions and thoughts and everything they're used to. But honey, it's going like this now, and it's going like this, and it's going exponential. Mm -hmm. It's going mm -hmm. exponential now. It's like the end of a birth. As a mama, I don't care. I, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you remember <laughs> Too that? Too many years? times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let us be very clear here. I don't care how it goes. Mm -hmm. The mothers of New York. Should the women of New York, because yeah. all women are mothers. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fathers of New York. Mm -hmm. 
Because all men are fathers, whether they implanted a seed or not. Well, there's male and female we, principles in We universe, yeah. need to come together. Mm -hmm. One, to defend the, the Occupy group, they're wonderful youth. They had me up at, uh, I'm going up to Syracuse with them Good. next week. I missed Good. last week, I couldn't get up. Yeah, yeah. And they had me up at Corner in New York. They're just wonderful young people. Yeah. And a rainbow of colors. It's yeah. good to see the diversity of the right, young group, right. even though most of those young people are still white. Mm. Uh, but these young people, people are grasping for what mm -hmm. you're talking about right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, to get an understanding. You can see the grasp. Mm -hmm. And as they move out, they're using every skill they can find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What they're missing is what we had in Jackson when the Freedom Riders came. And that is, all of a sudden, we had Woman Power Unlimited all right. sprung up out of the black community to white women. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we had at we got to get back Montgomery to when the when yeah. the bus boycott started. Yeah, right, all right. of a sudden, you had yeah. the women's political organization right. to spring up. No, I remember. Saying, yeah, yeah. And I'm not just talking about women. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I know. I know. Yeah. But we, I'm saying that yeah. it's the springing of that thing. Yeah, right. That has not sprung. I think the youth have moved. Yeah. Bad mom and dad. I, th I think it'd be good to get back to ca capture that which it was. I think some of the young people don't realize that, I think. Yeah, I know. But yeah. there was something blowing in the wind, Bobby Dillon. His poetry oh, yes, was right on the money. Right yes. on the money of the time. Precious, yes. And it was everywhere in the world. It was yes. every. Yes. They've managed to stamp it out. Yes. They've managed to stamp it out. And uh, now it's rising again, mm -hmm. and it ought to be supported. And one place where it's being supported mightily, or trying to be, is in public access. Yes. And that's something where yes. the public has access to community. And do you realize we just got a new franchise here? Talk about and it. And do you realize that we got a f into the future, we got a programming capability uh, for, uh, and on May Day, when the established meter were saying, oh, that's just silly, a bunch of kids go play in your sandbox, and that's mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. Spartacus all over again. Yes, it's yes. always going to be unjust, it's always a scarce, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, everything mm -hmm. like that. And that was their attitude with Gestapo tactics to break it up, to make sure, and they're Gestapo now, in terms of making sure it doesn't raise its head. Just settle in to your slave-like position as always, you, that kind of thing. But uh, we, we should get back to that spirit because it's, it's really called for now. Amazingly, uh, intri uh, Chinese have a saying, spare us from interesting and in, in living in interesting times. These are the most interesting times ever, these very days. It's been all my life. It's and I thank God we got a candidate running for the Congress of the Senate in the United States in the green. Um, um, and, and then there's going to be these political things and everything, but I think there's going to have to come something, this larger vision. It's a vision thing. Yes. And they will, they will derate it, but it's going to come a vision thing, and that's what I think we're lacking. And it's going to come out in public access. You've got 3,000 of these across the country. They've got mm -hmm. a way of getting access. They yes. can now put things on the Internet. You can autodidactically uh, educate yourself. The whole world is at your fingertips on the computer now mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of education. Mm -hmm. Systems mm -hmm. thinking is going to become in again rather than just getting some algorithmic job or something uh, or some job instead of all the mm -hmm. function on money, right. the, the concentration right. on money and that kind of thing. They're going to have to have a thing that's going to be uh, concentrating on a universally just system where people will be able to have income buying power without doing anything for it. Mm -hmm. Now that could run a counter to the work ethic and all the rest that we've been brought up on and does have value, well, particularly for the auto died that. Uh, that's something always happening. The parent that raised children, the old folk will sit around and talk with young people about yesterday. Yeah. The old folklorists, the musicians and artists, uh, the people are still cleaning houses and doing all of those things that we have traditionally done. Yeah, and they the will have to be was done. The things that we had this small group that mm -hmm. emerged that says, you clean my house, and I pay you for it. Yeah. You cook my food, and I pay you for it. Yeah. And then it hired your sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. To go fight a recruit war. Recruit them into the military to not just fight a war, because yeah. we have been seeing them fighting over yonder, yeah. but also to control you at home. That's right. There goes a posse comitatus. Oh, ain't no doubt about it. And so, Magna Carta might as well be So when we begin to understand that any time you develop a system of any sort, mm -hmm. where it's a partnership among groups of humans, yeah. whether it's a partnership among men who ran a, a, a system of slavery with the 
assistance of women. It's still slavery. Yeah, it's slavery. Slavery still holds. So, but it's, it's slavery. Always, it was for all of us. Yeah. So we thought slavery was just for, in this country, mm. slavery was for black folk. Yeah. Indians for a few minutes and then mm. they were gone. Well, they were mostly Scots, white Scots, Irish, yeah. and, and Welsh for a few minutes yeah. and then, yeah. then yeah. they became something else. Yeah. But we didn't understand that if you set up a system that says, I sit at the back of the bus, mm. you got to sit at the front of the bus. Mm -hmm. You don't get the right to sit at the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. You make the mistake of going to the back of the bus, mm -hmm. you get the same treatment I get, where? For coming to the front of the bus. Okay. All right? right. Yeah, so when yeah. we begin yeah, to understand everybody, that yeah. these things hooked us all, yeah, yeah, right. and there's a small little group that sits up here grinning, mm -hmm. because they know that if one of theirs breaks the rule, we got to get some of them. They will be dead. And I think they got to get it. Thank you. Almost over, right? Okay. So, um, we, we, okay, so are there signals? I guess we must be just about over. So, coming to the end, this idea about, uh, uh, this other idea I brought up is really, is, is um, heresy to yes. the left. <laughs> that you have, to, you have to start thinking about, because, you know, but I think that's something along those lines is what should be done so that they would get to be where people have, and Qaddafi was in the right track, where they would have income to do what they want to do. And so all of the major values, love, all the rest, mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. don't have to go out and jump to some senior vice president thing to do some little thing that yes. an algorithm yes. can do. You get the production. You can get the production of things and everything. You don't need to have the slave people doing their little cubicle capitalist things and doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. But then they have to have the ability to have income to do and have a life that they want. That's called freedom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And that's something that we have a capability of providing for all of humanity within an ecological context. And we have to have a template or an operating manual for what that reality is rather than all the perverted little uh, pieces of it that called, is called political debate. There's gotta be vision coming from somewhere. Harold, as I say, let me say it again. I'm running on a freedom agenda. Yeah, say it, say it. A constitutional amendment that guarantees the right to vote. Okay. A constitutional amendment that guarantees a universal education. Oh, 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 no oh. more student loans. And, and for any loans that are there, we cancel them forever. Well, that has been that's a, a sin, of sin against the nation. A yeah. trillion dollars owed by, 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 uh -huh. by, by, by students, former students, including myself. Yeah. A constitutional right to health care. These single healthcare. player, you'd like to call single it single player, player call yeah. it socialized medicine, call it whatever you want, but a constitutional right to get your teeth fixed when, mm. fixed when, when your mouth is going bad, mm. your eyes are bad. Mm. A constitutional right that we can afford in a nation with this kind of wealth. Yeah, this capital. world, this world. And now we've reached that point. Yeah. And so we have to begin to talk about a constitutional right to an economic bill of rights. Mm -hmm. For what? For the right to income, jobs. So we need a, well, an okay. economic bill of rights. Okay, well, so I, we're down to those things, Harold. And if we don't, as American people stand up at this hour of history, then we have failed humanity, and as far as I'm concerned, deserve to move on off the planet. I think the thing that's going to really is move when we, 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 we demand the rights to capital ownership assets that give us income the way the rich guys That's right, it. an economic bill that's of rights. That's not we'll job. That. That's not job. Economic bill of rights. We, want an we have a we right We want to. ownership. We have worked for and gotten these things. Mm. It was not gotten by the one or two who said I had some capital to start it. Mm. It was gotten by the millions upon millions of workers yeah, throughout right. the hundreds of years that we have been here yeah. to accumulate the capital that we and have. And when we understand that and mm. really understand okay, that, yeah. then we right. will demand our right yeah. to own it. Rather than just being serfs on their state where they own all that. And planet Earth belongs to human yeah. beings. It doesn't belong to and all that other animal I'm life. I'm voting green. I'm voting oh, green thank for you Senator now. Uh, thank you Coley so much. Clark, uh, Coley Clark, our senator for the Green Party. We didn't get a chance. I'm sorry I got ranting, but it's just something. But the Green the, Party is my party. Yeah, We're deal. on the Green Highway. Yeah, okay, sing We're it, marching girl. every sing day. Okay. We're walking on the Green Highway. All right. We're going across New York State. Yes. We are marching tall and strong. Sure enough. We're going to even go to John Brown's home. Mm, yeah. We are marching on the green highway. Uh, oh, yes, we are. <laughs>